Okay, so today in this video I'm going to show you how to set up and use an equatorial telescope such as this one. Now, the first thing you want to do is obviously go to your observation site, that could be on your back garden, that could be a hill in the middle of nowhere, that's right here. So, the initial thing you want to do is balance your tripod. Get your own spirit level and balance it out. That way you can ensure it's accurate. Some come with a built-in spirit level, but it's always best to use an external one to ensure it is truly accurate. You balance it by doing it north to south, east to west, until you've got it nice and level throughout. Then you're ready to begin to set up the telescope. First, attach it to the tripod and screw it on nice and tight using the knob on the bottom. Now, before we go into setup, I'm going to show you each individual part of the telescope, what it's for and how to use it. I may go into depth later on how to use different parts, such as these two things which are called setting circles. So, let's jump to that. Okay, so first of all, we start with this section of the telescope. This is what you could call the head. This here, this bottom bit, is what's known as your altazimuth section. Basically, altitude and azimuth, or longitude and latitude. It works on the basis of you can screw this here, this little screw, which allows the telescope to go back and forward or up and down. And then you've got your azimuth, because that was your altitude, this is your azimuth. You undo the knob at the bottom and the entire thing rotates on its base. But whenever you've finished adjusting any of these, ensure that you tighten them up by using the supplied knobs. Also, thankfully, you'll have a scale here. The purpose of these is your polar alignment. The whole idea is you set this to what your longitude is, here in England it's 52, and then that allows you to point to celestial north. Then you point the entire telescope north and you should be able to find Polaris in the telescope. But we'll go into that in depth later. Then you've, these two here are called setting circles. These are what we use to find stuff in the night sky because they work on the basis of, with your right ascension, it works on the basis of hours, minutes and seconds. To be able to get that accurate though, you'd need an 8 inch setting circle, which would be really awkward. And then you've got your declination, which is factory set, so you don't have to do anything with that other than look at it. That works on the basis of degrees. The best way to do it is imagine it kind of like a grid which is going to pop up now. Now, the whole point of using an equatorial grid rather than an azimuth grid is it will allow you to track the objects in the night sky the way they move. The problem with an azimuth grid is the way it tracks it will go left and right and up and down, so you end up with zigzags if you're doing astrophotography. By all means it is good for observation, but also locating night sky objects, the altitude and azimuth of them change throughout the night, whereas the right ascension and declination don't change, simply because of the way the night sky moves and the way an equatorial grid moves. So the whole idea is obviously you use these to find stuff in the night sky. They have knobs on the other side which will allow you to move them about. And it allows you to rotate the telescope into any position across the night sky. Now what we do with these is you set up with a polar alignment and then you find an object such as the star Arcturus. You find its right ascension and then you will rotate this by loosening this screw. And then you can go, alright, so it's a whatever. And then you tighten the screw up so it tracks it and the right ascension moves with it. If you loosen the right ascension, if you want to find an object, you loosen it up and then you can slide it and the right ascension stays in place so you can find it correctly. Also you have these, one here and one that is usually here. These are your fine adjustment knobs, so you go roughly to where the object is and then you can slowly turn it using that. That allows you to get nice precise movements to be able to centre an object in the middle of your eyepiece. Now I haven't got one here because I've got a motor on the other side so I can use the controls and that for fine adjustment. Next up we've got what is known as the counterweight. This counterweight is used to balance the telescope so when it's at awkward angles the telescope doesn't drop or move. So for example I could Move the telescope like that, and it will stay in that position because of it being balanced. In a minute we'll go through the process of balancing the telescope. But first of all, allow me to show you other sections of the telescope. 
So after the counterweight, we've obviously got the entire optical tube assembly. And that is essentially the telescope itself. So what this allows you is it views. And this works on these higher telescopes on the basis of a mirror that is down at the bottom, as you can see. And it's a very shiny, very reflective mirror. Here, this little doohickey, if you so wish to call it that, is what is known as the finder scope. It works on the basis of you have it so it is aligned with the telescope with objects that are far away. You can do that by adjusting your altitude and your azimuth, as once again, it goes with those names, longitude and latitude essentially. And then you turn it on, which it then shines a small red light onto a piece of glass here. This here is your focus tube or draw tube. And this is where you'll pop your eyepieces so you can focus it up. All you do is rotate that. Sometimes you can loosen it up with screws under here or other sections which will allow you to loosen it up. And then you'll have the clamp knobs which will keep your eyepieces in the telescope. Now on some scopes, such as mine, you will get this. And all this is essentially is, allows you to put a camera on here, point it up so you can take pictures with your camera rather than having to connect it to the telescope. Because some telescopes of this design, a Newtonian, are really awkward to set up with. And then these two are what's known as your C clamps, or just box standard clamps. The point of them is that they clamp in the optical tube assembly so it doesn't slide about. Now, thankfully, like I said, all of these have grids. So this one here has got a grid, which if I can get into focus, it'll show you the numbers. Uh, this grid allows you to set your longitude on. With mine, it's off by 10 degrees because on some cheap scopes, it will be slightly off. Um, this will help you align with Polaris. You'll be able to find out when aligning with Polaris if it is out of it. This, obviously, is your right ascension. And as you can see, it was it's got degrees of six intervals. And it works on the basis of each of these numbers is an hour, and these intervals are 10 minutes. So you can't actually go into seconds with this one. But that is how you will find objects on that basis. And this is obviously declination, which works on the basis of degrees. So 10 intervals, nice and easy to do. Now we're going to balancing. And once you've got it all set up and you know what each individual part is for, we can go into balancing this telescope. All you do is adjust the right ascension and declination knobs and you want to get your telescope to a nice 90 degree level. Now this is pretty simple because all you do is rotate it. So it's like that. Don't rotate the tripod base though. You'll want to keep that in the same position. So to go into balancing, all you do first is loosen up your declination. As you can see straight away, the back of the telescope optical tube assembly is too heavy because of the primary mirror. So to sort that, you adjust the screws on the clamps and you just push the telescope forward in the base until you get it so it stays in one position. So it stays like that. That's as simple. Once you've done that, tighten these up again, but don't do them too tight otherwise you'll end up bending the optical tube assembly, which you don't want to do. It can ruin your image, should we say. It makes it awkward. So once you've done that, set that nice and level and tighten up your declination knot. Next up, you loosen the right ascension knob. Now, just to give you an example, if the weight's over here, I let go, it's far too heavy this end. And then if you go over here, it's too heavy on this end. So, what you want to do is find it at a point where it will stay. And what you'll do, you'll tighten it, move, stays, move, stays. Nice and simple, and that's all balancing is. Now what you are able to do is sell into what's known as base position. Basically everything is in line. This will get you ready for setting up for power alignment. So for power alignment you have to take this off, turn on your fine scope, insert a low power eyepiece which is 25mm and only using your azimuth and altitude you go on to locate where Polaris is in the finder scope then fine tune it so it's in the centre of the eyepiece on the eyepiece. Now to ensure it is nice and centre you can go to a higher eyepiece, so a 9mm, 4mm, if you have a 1mm, and just get it nice and centre. It's not going to be perfect, it won't be pointing at slightly your one pole, but it'll be good enough for observation. It'll keep objects in the night sky nicely 
without having to make any adjustments. To go into your astrophotography, you're going to have to learn how to do what's known as drift alignment, which I'll cover in a different video. So that's basically all polar alignment is. Sublime Polaris, it'll be a diagram pop up. And basically all you're going to have to do is line it with Polaris, keep everything in line. After that, you'll find objects by adjusting the right ascension and declination. So it could be an object over there, it could be an object there, so on and so forth. Now, to give you an example of an object, let's say you want to find M81, Bode's Galaxy, which is like a near Earth's major or the Big Dipper. It works on the basis of its declination is 69 degrees, so you come down here, me. And adjust it so it's at 69 degrees. So that's 69 degrees declination. Then we're able to find it on the right ascension. Now, this isn't going to be accurate as my right ascension isn't set up, but it's at 9 hours 55 minutes. So we'll go, okay, loosen up that screw, or if you want, take the entire thing out if you know you're going to be changing objects often. So you slide it, that's at 9 hours. And that's it, about 9 hours 55 minutes. Now this isn't accurate as it's actually a lot higher up in the sky. So, just for example purposes, it'd be something like that. But well, then you'd be pointing at both sides. Then you'll use your little fine adjustment knobs to centre it in the eyepiece. Now with deep sky objects such as galaxies, nebulas, star clusters, so on and so forth, you can use what's known as an inverted gaze. And all the vertical gaze means is, instead of looking at the centre of the image, look to the side, and what's known as a fuzzy, your galaxy or nebula, will show up in the eyepiece. And you won't be able to see colour because your eyes aren't that sensitive to nebula colour and all that. But you will be able to see fuzzy patches or shapes of galaxies or nebulas, gorgeous sight to see. And that's essentially how you set up and use an equatorial telescope such as this one itself. I hope it was educational.